friends we are discussing about the minerals physical properties which help us to identify them based on their physical properties how can we do engineering with them and in case its value add on value to the available natural resources as of now we have discussed few properties like color form luster streak etc we will continue our discussions further we were discussing about the hardness of the mineral in that we have said it is the resistance offered by the mineral for external force all minerals are not equally hard there are some minerals which are soft which are hard it all depends on the atomic packing we have mentioned that diamond chemical composition carbon chemical composition carbon but lignite chemical composition carbon graphite chemical composition carbon coal all they have different hardness this hardness because their atomic packing is different though chemical composition similar on the other hand quartz jasper amethyst we have mentioned they have chemical composition sio2 same chemical composition atomic packing is also similar except size of the particle therefore their hardness remain the same whether it is amethyst jasper or a gate or quartz their hardness remain the same because atomic packing is also same chemical composition also same in the first example i have quoted lignite coal graphite diamond etc although chemical composition is same carbon carbon but their atomic packing is different therefore their hardness it means hardness of a mineral is dependent totally on the atomic packing and atomic packing is an important governing factor not only to decide upon what type of mineral it is but also help us to engineer them example those minerals which have hardness more than 7 in the most scale of hardness what is most scale of hardness in a minute i tell you those minerals which have hardness more than 7 are easy to engineer them i can cut them into any desired shape i can cut them into any desired size i can polish them that is how they are used in the jewelry industry mineral like quartz corundum diamond etc finds wide application in the jewelry industry because they can withstand cutting and carving well friends we will continue our discussion a little later on hardness i have to show you more scale of hardness before that how we have arrived that scale there is one test called vikas indentation test so simple we have a mineral i we have a needle i apply certain amount of load and i observe through a microscope or telescope whatever you call microscope and there is a particular scale like this like this like this like this when without applying the load that needle just touching the specimen what is the corresponding reading i can note down okay when i apply particular load like this this needle sink into and therefore this reading changes needle sinks and the reading changes and based on that the load applied the area of the specimen i am going to calculate its hardness its ability to withstand the pressure 
a scientist called Moh studied all possible minerals available on the earth that is more than 1100 minerals he has studied and subjected them to this kind of test and found and arranged them with the increasing hardness of the mineral and thus he has arrived a scale of Moh scale of hardness. I come to that point a little later, of course, in the way. Okay, I want to show. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going. Yes, more scale of hardness. This is he has arranged all the minerals depending on their hardness. The softest material as on today we know is a top. Next mineral is a gypsum, next is a calcite, next is a fluorite, like that. Then corundum, ninth one, tenth one is a diamond. It is a relative. Does not mean that if I have to apply some pressure on the corundum and make indent on a diamond, if I have to increase the load just little not adequate, means corundum to diamond, diamond is nearly 30 times harder than the corundum. And talk if I apply 1 kg, that does not mean that if I apply 2 kg, I will able to make the indentation on the gypsum, it is only relative. Tall is the soft, right? gypsum is a little harder than that, calcite is harder than that. He has arranged them in the order. I have an unknown specimen. I want to find its hardness. What is the approach I follow? I try to scratch by my fingernail and then just check whether there is any permanent indent mark. If I do not find any permanent indent mark, I take the glass needle, glass plate and try. If it is not scratchable with the glass plate, my inference is its hardness is more than 4.5. I take the iron needle and scratch. Suppose that mineral is a scratchable with the iron needle, not with the glass plate. My simple inference is it is between 4.5 and 6.5. Whether it is a 5. 6, how do I know? I go to then, go to this box. I take the mineral, fifth one, appetite. It is not scratchable with the glass plate, means more than 4.5. Maybe 4.7, 4.8, maybe, I do not know. Then I try with the appetite, that is the fifth one. It is a scratchable. My inference is, it is a hardness between 4.5 and 5 not scratchable more than 5. I go to 6 to 1. If it is a scratchable with a glass plate, sorry, not scratchable with a glass plate, but a scratchable with a needle, pen knife, knife, hardness of this mineral is between that of fifth not scratchable, more than fifth, but scratchable with the iron needle, it is less than 6.5. Therefore, I have selected the sixth one, orthoclase. If the mineral is scratchable with the sixth one, orthoclase, my inference is its hardness is between apatite and orthoclase, between 5 and 6. I can place a merit between 5.5 like this. This is the way we find the hardness of the minerals. We have all these 10 minerals are arranged in the hardness box in the increasing order. Before I use, I must have, these are the standard minerals I must know because suppose tomorrow one boy comes and this one he places here, this one he places here. Tomorrow you use and it is scratchable with this mineral and therefore you may say it is scratchable with the third one. No. This some mismanagement, misarrangement must have done. Therefore, while making use of this 
box as a tool. I must know all these minerals are they in properly placed in their order. Like any instrument we use, we must know whether the instrument is giving consistent result. And we have to calibrate some value it gives that we cannot take as its value. Instrument is need to be checked. Similarly, this is a tool we are going to use. We have to properly check. Therefore, I have if a primary knowledge of all these minerals, yes, I will. Yes, sorry. Yes, therefore, I will able to use hardness as a parameter not only to test a mineral, but based on hardness, I can decide upon where and how I can use. We have already said minerals whose hardness is more than seven. They can withstand cutting and carving well, we can use them in industry. But there is one property called cleavage. What do we mean by the cleavage? Cleavage of a mineral is its ability to split easily along a particular direction. Why mineral has a cleavage? Mindel has cleavage Mindel has a cleavage because of its poor atomic bonding or atomic packing. Example, I have a mineral mineral like this as strong atomic bonding in this direction in this direction, in this direction, in all the three possible direction, atomic packing is so strong that I cannot split the minerals easily in any direction. I cannot split like this, I cannot split like this, I cannot split like this. Because of its strong atomic packing, I cannot split the minerals easily. On the other hand, if I have a mineral which has Example, this is a mineral, these are the weak atomic bonding here, this may be strong, this may be weak. Then if I haphazardly just drop the specimen from certain height or simply apply the pressure, I am not applying the pressure on a particular direction with desired direction, no. Just simply I apply some pressure, just drop it. What may happen? Because the mineral has weak atomic bonding in this direction, perpendicular to that direction mineral splits easily. Atomic packing is strong in this direction, I cannot split them like that. It is not because of strong or weak, it is unequal. Strong in some direction, weak in some direction, then this mineral can be split easily along the direction perpendicular to the direction of weak packing. Suppose I have a mineral, it has weak atomic bonding, this direction, this direction, this direction, etc. It does not matter in any direction, every direction is weak. Therefore, I cannot break, it is with equal force, I can break. There is nothing like easy or difficult. I can split them easily, here also, here also, here also. It means weak atomic bonding in all the direction, does not make a difference in which direction we apply pressure. Strong atomic bonding in all the direction, yes, we have to apply high pressure. But minerals with different 
atomic packing in a different uh, direction. It become easy for us to split in a direction perpendicular to the atomic packing. Now, you may ask me a question, should we break and try? All other properties, we have not done anything to the specimen, we just we have lifted and felt or like that. Hardness also, we have not damaged whole scale, just trying to scratch, that's all. Here are we going to break the mineral and see whether mineral has a cleavage or not. Friends, suppose a mineral has a cleavage, what happens is, this is a specimen, if mineral has a cleavage, how do I? For example, here we have step like this step, this step, this step, all a smooth, plain, even, shining. That is the indication of a cleavage. Here in this direction, there is nothing like a plain, even surface or smooth surface, no shining. There is no cleavage in this direction. And I have showed you just two steps like this is nothing but the same direction parallel to this, the same direction. In this direction also, whatever the property I find, here also I find, I find it step like a smooth, shining, even surface. It means this is one direction clear. In this specimen particularly, I have one more direction perpendicular to this direction, here also I have smooth, plain, shining surface. I also get a step like, it means this mineral has cleavage in this direction, this direction 1 and one more direction perpendicular to it. But in the third direction, there is no cleavage. Minerals may have cleavage in one direction, two directions, three directions, etc depending on the shape of the mineral. Actual just a cubical shape, only three direction. There are some other shape of the minerals. There can be some more other direction where plane surface we get. Therefore, whenever a mineral has a cleavage, one is its identification. Example, I have a mineral having three direction cleavage Two, three different kind of pyrite also has, galena also has got, they also have two direction perpendicular to each other, uh, in all the three direction. How do I distinguish both have three direction cleavage? One, on the other hand, there are some minerals which have cleavage in two directions, but not perpendicular. Example, I will quote some minerals like ampibol, horn blend a little later. Those minerals have cleavage in two direction but not perpendicular at an angle. That angle also become important for me. Ampibol is a mineral has cleavage in two direction but not perpendicular. In all respect, similar color similar to that of augite, a mineral, pyroxene group. It has cleavage, two direction, here also cleavage direction, two direction, similar color, but ampibol has cleavage at an angle, 56 degree, 64 degree like that, then I can easily distinguish this is a horn blend, this is a pyroxene group mineral like augite, because it has a perpendicular cleavage. Calcite is another mineral, if you break in any direction, any direction, it is weak, it broken into rhombic shape, it has a cleavage all at an angle, not perpendicular. Calcite I can distinguish. Therefore, cleavage is one important property governed by atomic packing, therefore I can depend on its identification, distinguish different minerals, also it qualifies for its application in industry. Example, I have a beautiful colored mineral. 
I do not know what it is. Attractive color. Can I use them? I am tempted to use it in a jewelry industry. In the jewelry industry, what is required? Minerals available in a different size and shape. I have to have a beautiful necklace like or a ring like. The crystal I have to use should fit into my ring. My necklace I have to cut into that size. Or I may have to polish it. Or I may have to carve the required shape I need. Then if mineral has a cleavage, it cannot withstand that cutting, carving, polishing, however attractive color it is. Therefore, cleavage disqualifies some minerals for its application in jewelry industry. It is helpful for me to identify several minerals. Cleavage is an important physical property. I am not going to break any mineral, but this is a naturally cut surface shape that develop this kind of plain, even smooth shining surface. I just see them and try to understand the cleavage pattern and try to understand. Yes, I have one more problem now. Suppose a mineral has cleavage in all the three direction. Mineral has cleavage in three direction. In all the three direction, if it has weak atomic bonding, broken into plain, smooth, shining surface. Then what is a fracture? Fracture is a broken surface of a mineral. Appears a broken surface except the cleavage. Suppose mineral has only three directions and all the three direction cleavages are there. Wherever I break, I get a plain smooth shining surface. I am mistaken for cleavage fracture. If mineral has other direction than this, depending on the mineral the nature, I have to try there. There also minerals are broken with even plain surface. There is no cleavage, but they are broken into plain, uneven, even, whatever it may be. It is a broken surface, not necessarily cleavage. Cleavage means a step like, shining, smooth, but here it is not step like. It may not shine also, but it is broken simply plain. Then, whether it is a cleavage or fracture, we can easily distinguish such broken surface is called fracture. It is important. I can depend on this whether this mineral has cleavage or not. I can try to break them in different direction and try. And each mineral has unique fracture broken characters. Example, I have a mineral called jasper. When I break this on the surface, we find the ring-like appearance on the broken surface. Ring-like, concentric, ring-like, ring-like, ring-like surface, broken surface. That is characteristic of that mineral. There are certain minerals which are broken into irregular surface, irregular fracture we call. There are certain minerals broken into sharp edges. Important these are. Can I use this mineral? It is a sharp edge. I use this for my ornament or jewelry industry. It can cut my finger. There are dangers associated with it. Therefore, I have to carefully make use of these physical properties and use them in identification. Now, specific gravity. Now, I go there, I go there. Yes, what is the specific gravity? I come back, don't worry friends. It is, I have a specimen 
we have several methods we must have studied jolly spring balance is the most ideal method density bottle is also another method to find we take the weight of the mineral in air weight of the mineral in air and weight of the mineral in a specimen we immerse the specimen i have this is the balance i have this is the specimen i weight in air then put a jar put water and find its weight again and then compare that weight of the mineral in air i know when i immerse the specimen in water and then find its weight what is the its weight when immersed in water then apply this formula i get the specific gravity it is so simple friends plenty of minerals majority of the minerals have medium specific gravity what do you mean by medium when i say medium specific gravity of the mineral if it is in the range between 2.5 to say 2.9 these minerals we call medium specific gravity example quartz has specific gravity 2.65 gold has so much platinum has so much gold 19.3 platinum 21.45 these are heavy heavier dense high specific gravity mineral now there are several minerals lighter than 2.5 you we call light weight low specific gravity when mineral has low specific gravity or high specific gravity it become a distinguishing character because majority of the minerals have medium specific gravity how do i define medium or low is i have a mineral there are certain several standard liquid say bromoform is a liquid if i use the bromoform and drop my specimen if the specimen sinks it is heavier than the bromoform its specific gravity is more than that of the bromoform that is 2.9 i call it high specific gravity if mineral floats its specific gravity is lower than 2.89 2.89 it floats it may be medium or low like in the laboratory i need not try all this technique i just simply lift the mineral and feel compared to its size is it heavy is it light example barite is a mineral having specific gravity 4.5 specific gravity 4.5 barite marble piece also in all respect looks like a barite in all other whether it's a shining whether it's a color everything it looks similar then how do i distinguish barite and marble marble has a low specific gravity barite has a high specific gravity although all other many of its properties are similar thus i am able to distinguish barite and from other minerals remember carefully hematite mineral ore minerals oxide group minerals hematite magnetite pyrolusite these are all oxide group minerals they do also have high specific gravity how do i distinguish barite from magnetite or hematite both have high specific gravity it means specific gravity alone will not help us to distinguish several minerals barite is a light colored hematite is a dark color therefore along with the specific gravity color also i use i have to know apply both these and try to identify 
Thus, it becomes easy for us to identify applying. Now, to identify several minerals, often not all these properties are useful. are not possible. Not all these properties, sorry. Yes, not all these properties I cannot apply with satisfaction. There are so many other limitations we have already discussed, weathering, impurity, etc. If mineral is exposed to air for longer time, pyrite gets oxidized etc. This, there are so many limitations. Therefore, I cannot apply all this. I have to apply with caution combination of the properties I have to apply. Friends, we were discussing about the fracture. I have mentioned this is a Hackley fracture, conchoidal fracture, earthy fracture, even fracture and how they are important, how they should not mislead us with the cleavage. Like that, I use a combination of these properties to identify several minerals. Friends, let us go further. Yes, I have mentioned the form, the habit, form, the shape. In general, in the mineral kingdom, mineral domain, we have most commonly these are the habits, forms, we find them in minerals. A secular, I show you the photograph, needle like a mineral called natrolite belonging to geolite family exhibits this kind of form, habit, external habit, needle-like, bladed. What do you mean by blade? Blade is a flat. Blade is a flat, very thin, broad, rectangular shape. Rectangular shape, very thin. If you take bundles of a blade and touch its edges, they do not cut our finger, but one single blade you take and touch its edge, it can cut our finger. That property we call blade, bladed. There are some minerals like a kinate has this property. It means it can cut our finger so sharp, its edges, it has a rectangular shape, very thin in some direction. In two dimension, they are broad, third dimension, very thin. Such kind of mineral commonly, if I have this kind of habit I find, I try to classify blindly, say this is a kinite, because not many minerals exhibit this kind of property. Botryoidal, like a bunch of grapes. Example, Charles C. Dore. It gives me a hint about its origin. Minerals which are formed from colloidal state develop this kind of structure. What is that? A mineral has like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. That is botryoidal form. We do not have any control on this. I give you a simple example. Take a candle burn it, the wax, it flows down the candle. I have a candle. It burns, it produces wax. What is the shape of this? What is the shape of this? It deposited on the ground. Do you have any control on this? Sometimes it flows like a needle-like, it flows like a needle-like, sometimes a needle-like elongated, sometimes like this, sometimes deposited like this on the ground. Their shape 
is not controlled by us. Nature does it. Why it does, how it does is beyond. But I tell only one point here is the temperature. Okay, leave it. The botryoidal form, generally there are many minerals. Example, Charles Sedoni, I quoted even some iron deposits also. Those minerals which are precipitated from, that is colloidal state. Colloidal state is neither a liquid nor a solid in between stage. From that stage, if something is precipitated, this kind of a shape is formed. I have nothing to do with the shape. It can be used some important industry decorative type. In my uh, aquarium, I can bring them and put them a kind of attraction. But most important is it helps me how it is formed. That is very important because those which are formed by this way are ultra pure and I can find them a suitable industry for their use. Therefore, a normal iron ore formed and an iron ore formed by this process precipitated from that is much better grade. Similarly, the Charles Sedoni which is very pure silica like I can get this. Because, of course, I say if we have a range within that colloidal, then there is a possibility of little deviation. Otherwise, perfect, they can be 100% or 99% pure material we get. And also other related applications I find. Flaky, easily separable layers. I find something is a layer, layer like. But just because it is a layer like, I cannot separate them. The bonding between different layers is so high. In some cases, the bonding between different layers is so weak that with a needle, I can separate them. Example, minerals like mica have this habit of flaky, layer like, layer like, layer like, I can separate. Simple. That is a flaky. Those flaky mineral in one way helps me to identify. The other way is it is weak. If such minerals found in my construction site, it means that is there are many plenty of weak minerals and that can create a problem. Foliated, elongated, layered like two dimension, one dimension, elongated. There are some minerals which are foliated. This layer like but not separable. We may feel this is a layer, I can separate, but it's not separable like talk. Talk is a mineral. Fibrous, thread like. I have acicular needle like, I have a thread like fibrous. What is the difference? I have a fibrous a thread like, I can separate the individual thread, they are fibrous. In needle like acicular, I cannot separate them, individual layers or individual needle or individual thread like, I cannot separate. Means the bonding between the different needle like fiber or thread like, here it is weak, I have this mineral called asbestos. I can use this mineral, shape them into any way. They, because by virtue of their habit, it is easy to mold them and they have special property. I can make use of them in some several industries. Reniform, this is a kidney shaped hematite. It is in all respect that of a colloidal form, but <coughs> sorry, the shape of this what we get 
is a little different they form a larger size harder you know otherwise in all respect it is similar to bottled tabular flat like table top like flat they have in two dimension rectangular or cube perfect square shape a plane surface in one direction we get in the other direction not such a table surface like flat two dimension rectangular or square shape but in third dimension it is a different it is a tabular flat like there are several minerals especially the orthoclase mineral is a typical example for this yes i have earlier mentioned about the color see those mineral which are available in plenty of different color we have a gray color we have a blue color we have a green or we call olive green olivine is a typical mineral pinkish this is a ruby or rose rose red color like these are the attractive different colors example this is a quartz this is a quartz this is how different color they are and depending on their color i can make you them they qualify uh, in market depending on the color all other physical properties except the color their chemical composition hardness streak this and that all are similar but their value their cost if it varies in the market because of the attractive color therefore color qualifies in addition to all this i have said it help us to easily increase their value by doing engineering add on value we say now just now we have mentioned a different habits see we have said a pottery order that are dendritic like these are all the colloidal state coliform colloidal state these are also chalcedony these are colloidal state these are all some kind of a colloidal state this colloid i have just said neither liquid nor a solid in between stage now these are not colloidal and they develop into specific crystalline habit these are not crystalline not amorphous also they are crypto crystalline means minutely crystalline to understand them i have to study their crystal habit if i have to i have to use a high power magnification microscope they are also having atomic packing but this atomic packing are so easy to identify with normal microscope if i have a small pocket lens magnification of 20 of the order that's enough to identify shape of the individual particle and these are some of the different shapes i find in minerals commonly yes for just now we have discussed crystalline from needle like like this or different layer like flaky just now we have said crystalline we have these are all different shapes we can say this is massive does not exhibit any specific shape we can say massive this is perfect three dimensional whether this direction this direction third direction more or less equal equi dimensional whereas this mineral elongated growth in this direction growth is less this is a hexagonal like that there are several minerals have other shape as well yes we have mentioned about the streak we i have showed how to find the streak i have a plate rub the mineral i may get the color like this that's the color of that particular mineral color of that particular mineral like that thus every mineral most of the ore minerals have the streak based on that i can identify them all industrial minerals 
Now you ask me a question, why more ore minerals have a stick? All these minerals are oxides, all these minerals have hardness less than 6, easy to break, therefore easy to process in industry, they are industrial minerals, they become the raw material. Depending on their composition, their stick varies. A simple message is, if a mineral has a hardness 5, less than 5, it is easy to process them in industry, they become industrial important raw material. These minerals have that property, they find application in wide industry. Yes, luster we have mentioned, different shining property. So, metallic luster we call like polished metal, they shine, galena, pyrite, etc. are some minerals which have this kind of shining, we call metallic luster. Vitreous luster is quartz. Example, what is vitreous? You take a glass, break it, how the edge of the glass shine? Edge of the glass, the glass is colorless, but if you see the edge, they exhibit some color. We can say it is a vitreous luster. People also call often a glassy luster. Glassy habit is different, glassy luster is different. Glassy, broken, glass-like, minerals like quartz exhibit that kind of. Now, I can easily say whether it is a quartz or not. If quartz, it has to exhibit this kind of luster, but a diamond, if I break, it may not exhibit that kind of luster. Both are crystalline, both are colorless, both are hard, but I can distinguish. Silky, shining like silk thread. Silk thread in a particular direction, they shine. When tilt, depending on the direction of light, they shine in some particular direction. We call silky luster, shining like silk thread. These are also used in embroidery industry. And these are all finds application in variety of industry. We make pearly, pearls, kyanite is a sub pearly, muscovite mica is perfectly, M-I-C-A, perfectly pearly. Pearls, we know, it shines with a different color in different direction, pearls. Those minerals which have this kind of shining property, we call them pearly luster. Muscovite mineral, kyanite mineral nearly shines like that. Sub pearly we can call, if not pearly, often they also exhibit pearly. Resinous, resin cloth we know, olivine is that kind of mineral. I have shown earlier some green minerals like. I have said olive green, that gives this kind of a shining property. Edmontine means the highest degree of shining because of total internal reflection. Just now I have mentioned quartz also can have similar transparent and habit, hexagonal like diamond also can have, but diamond shines in a different way because of its a total internal reflection attributed to strong atomic packing. Greasy, opal is a mineral that shines like a grease. Often people say oily. What is that? If I have a specimen, I immerse this in oil and take it out, then see how it shines. When it was in the air, it shines in some way. When I immerse it in oil and take it out, it shines in different way. That kind of shining is called grease or greasy shining. Dull earth material, there are plenty of minerals which do not shine at all because of their poor, weak atomic bonding. They do not shine at all 
there are plenty of minerals which have this kind of shining example they shine like a clay dull shining magnesite i have quoted one mineral that is not the only one mineral there are several other minerals which have this kind of shine friends this we can make use in engineering in industry knowing their specific habit shining etc friends we will continue our discussion we have so far discussed various physical properties and we have seen the specimen exhibiting the properties how this can be engineered partially we know we will continue later